I want to officially welcome everyone to the um, North American Olive Oil Association's very first webinar. Um, my name is Joseph Propacci. I'm executive director of the North American Olive Oil Association. And I um, have to say we are thrilled that um, the True, to, true, true Food to <laughs> video project that we co-sponsored last year with Olive Oils from Spain has been so successful, far surpassing the combined million views by its first anniversary. Um, and, and when you watch the video, you understand why. For that, we have to thank True Food TV, TV, True Food TV. Say, say that 10 times fast, Joe, go on. Uh, I'll get it right before the end of the webinar. <laughs> and, and that means thanking Nicole Jolly and her husband, Mark. And, and Nicole, is thank you so much for being with us today. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's just a, such a pleasure to see you live and um, yeah. on the, not on the video, but it's great. Yeah, um, it's a treat to talk to you, Joe, and everyone out there, hello. Yeah, so Nicole, do you wanna, um, before we get started, so let, I'll, I'll, we're gonna actually watch the video. Um, we're gonna watch it in segments. Um, <clears throat> we'll break it, we, we went through it and sort of figured out organically where there were some good breaks for us to handle some questions and maybe maybe supplement what you know what's in the video. Um, and then, um, and then at the end, we hope we'll have some additional times for, uh, for question and answers. Um, um, Nicole, do you want to give yeah, us a I'll set it up? Down? Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, for those of you who don't know, um, my husband, Mark, and I run True Food TV. And our sort of flagship series is called How Does It Grow? And an offshoot of that is How Is It Made? And we were so lucky to work with um, Joe on this uh, particular episode of How Is It Made? And we filmed it back in 2019 in October, late October, 2019, just before, you know, months before the pandemic. So you're super lucky um, to be able to travel freely. And um, we also worked with Olive Oils of Spain. It was sort of a three-way joint partnership to um, film there. And we basically were on the ground filming for seven days, seven to 10 days. Um, my husband, Mark, does all the cinematography. We both write uh, the episodes. Uh, we had an on the ground um, Spanish drone pilot uh, shooting with us. And of course we had sort of a co-producer on the ground in Spain in the um, embodiment of Teresa from Olive Oils of Spain. And she was an integral part of that process uh, shepherding us around to uh, the various places where we filmed. Um, yeah, That's so the, there's- we, I think you have a photo, right? That you shared with Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think we yeah. might have a photo there. You can see the team of us. Um, but I, I host um, the episodes, I write the episodes and I edit the episodes. So I'm the editor, Mark is the lead shooter. You'll see him there to the right of me. In the middle is uh, Paco Vano, or Vano, um, who is uh, from Castillo de Canena, um, one of the olive oil producers that we filmed at in Spain. There's Teresa from Olive Oils of Spain, and the other guy with the camera is our um, drone pilot, Victor Delgado. Great. Yeah, I was so thinking, should we jump into it? I was getting the daily, um, you know, yeah. daily reports from Teresa, <laughs> what was going on. I was so jealous not to be there. <laughs> It was such a blast, but we were, it was intense. We were shooting from sun up to sundown nonstop, just trying to get cover everything we possibly could. So I hope everybody enjoys it if you haven't seen it. Yep, fantastic. Okay, so I think without further ado, why don't we jump in here? So first, first though, again, I wanna make sure you understand we're gonna watch the film in segments. We're gonna take breaks where it's appropriate to make, make some comments and handle some questions. Um, we recommend for best viewing that you go to full screen mode if you can. Um, there is a Q&A button, should be at the bottom of your screen um, to ask questions. We'll do our best to answer as many as we can. Um, and if you see a hand raise button at the bottom of your screen, ignore it because it's, it's been disabled on our end, so it, it won't do anything, okay? So with that, um, let's cue up the video and let's watch the first segment. For as long as I can remember, I have always wanted to see an olive harvest and to find out what it takes to make truly great extra virgin olive oil. Well, you and I are about to do just that. Welcome to the world's biggest olive oil producer, Spain.
This is Jaén, a province of southern Spain. Even if you've never heard of Jaén, you have likely tasted its olive oil. With over 66 million olive trees, this single pocket of Andalusia produces as much olive oil as the whole of Italy. In fact, Spain produces half of all the olive oil sold in the world. Olive trees have covered Haiyan's hillsides for thousands of years. Andalusia was the olive basket of the Roman Empire. To every corner the Roman army conquered, it brought olive oil made here. Olive oil was like crude oil to the Romans. It helped sustain the empire's imperial dominance for centuries because it was not only a primary source of nutrition, it was an indispensable fuel for lamps, it was medicine, it was cosmetics and perfume. It really is impossible to exaggerate the monumental importance of olive oil throughout human history. Both the oil and the olive tree were sacred too, to the Romans and to the Greeks and to the Egyptians before them. In fact, the olive tree is the oldest cultivated fruit tree known to man. It can survive for centuries in dry, craggy places, completely abandoned, and, like a phoenix, can even revive after burning. The world's oldest olive trees in Lebanon are believed to be 6,000 years old, and their fruit is still harvested and made into award-winning oil today. This tree in Haiyan is thought to be around 800 years old. Olive trees are unmistakable, with their trunks all twisted and gnarled, and their silvery green leaves shimmering in the sunlight. The color is actually a clever adaptation. While the tops of the leaves are glossy green, the undersides are covered in microscopic silver scales to help the leaves lock in their moisture. There are roughly 700 known olive varieties around the Mediterranean. Cornacabra, Lechín de Sevilla, Oji Blanca, Manzanilla are just some of the ones grown here in Spain. The most common, piqual, is named for its pointy tip and yields a high amount of intensely flavored oil. When people realize that we have more than 700 different varieties, this really enrich the concept yes. that is one of the best condiments in, yes. the, in the kitchen. Exactly. This is Francisco Vagno. His olive heritage goes back to the 18th century. He's one of two separate olive oil producers, helping me explore extra virgin here in Spain. The other is Lola Sagra, whose family has grown olives in Jaén since 1640. When you think of olive oil, perhaps you think of a particular taste, right? Well, each single variety of olive contains its own unique flavor of oil. And even then, there is a diversity of flavors among the same single variety, from one farm to the next, from one harvest season to the next. It depends on a million different factors. How much sun the trees got, how much water, how ripe the olives were, how were they harvested. It all impacts the final flavor of the oil. These factors affect the development of polyphenols, the antioxidants that give olive oil its flavor and healthful qualities, like supporting the heart and the immune system. Now, just like wine, tea, and coffee, you can buy olive oil that is a blend of varieties. In fact, this is the most common extra virgin that you can buy in the store. But you can also find specialty bottles of single varietals. Whichever oil you choose, it all starts the same way with the juice of the olive fruit. Seriously, that's what olive oil is, a fresh fruit juice. And because it's fresh, we should be enjoying it without delay. Seriously, we wouldn't put our orange juice in the pantry and then drink it after a year. Why are we doing that with our extra virgin olive oil? There are so many things that we've been getting wrong about extra virgin olive oil, myself included. So 
I've made a separate video with all my top olive oil tips, how to store it properly, how to choose the right olive oil for what you're doing in the kitchen. So look out for that one. I'm going to put the link in at the end of this video. But first, let's break down the different grades of olive oil. Virgin olive oil means oil that's been extracted from the fruit at low temperatures without using chemicals. Extra virgin olive oil is the highest grade of virgin. To classify as extra virgin, it has to meet a set of physical and chemical standards. Now, if a bottle simply says olive oil, then it's been refined with heat or chemicals to create an oil that's stripped of color, flavor, or aroma. That refined oil gets blended with virgin or extra virgin olive oil to add back in the color color, flavor, or aroma. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's really difficult to watch oneself, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it, it's, it's so good. I can't tell you how many times I've watched it. In my, oh, yay. In I see something else. And, <laughs> and all, the, all the other things that left got left on the cutting board Board, you know, like that we that we could have said so much to say. So yeah. hopefully we can talk about that now. <laughs> yeah. So so um, yeah, a couple of things. I was uh, as again as I was listening to it again. So you mentioned um, Spain being you know the dominant producer in the world, and, yeah. and it's true. On, on, in many years, most or most years, it seems they produce as much as fifty percent of the world supply. Um, following behind Spain uh, would be uh, the countries of Italy, Greece. Um, uh, Tunisia and Morocco. Okay, so those and I, those five, I think, probably account for close to eighty percent of the world's olive oil production. Um, wow. So it's um, you know it's 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 something that's uh, growing. I think now we've got sixty-seven different countries around the world that are uh, producing olive oil, and that that number is growing all the time. Um, and and it's exciting. And you can you know as as you as you've seen wonderful olive oil being produced in Spain. Wherever you can grow olives, you, if, if you know the art of making good olive oil, you can do it anywhere. Yeah, um, yeah. Olives, and olives will grow. You can do it. Absolutely. And, you know, that was part of one of the most exciting things about this as a learning experience. I, I didn't mention that I'm a journalist by background, so I'm just, you know, I want to know everything there is about the subject that I'm writing about. And just um, being able to think of olive oil in that way, uh, just sort of how our society has become comfortable with thinking about wine, right? About being from everywhere in the world and how they all have their own unique flavors and, and it's all being grown to, you know, or a lot of it is being grown to such high quality now. It, it's so similar and that made so much sense to me after doing this project. Yeah, yeah so um, we do have a question that's come in um, yeah. about, uh, what's the difference between olive oil and pure olive oil? Um, and, and so, you know, I want, I want to address that. So you mentioned the grade olive oil, uh, which is refined with uh, heat and chemicals um, and then has some virgin oil added back in. So it's important to understand, uh, first of all, the word, you know, the word pure olive oil, that's an that's a industry term for that grade. Right, which is the mixture of refined and virgin. We discourage um, marketing companies and producers from using the word pure olive oil. It's, it's, it's just to call it olive oil. And what it is, it is right. It's, it's, it's a, uh, a product that's uh, made from virgin oil, right? Oil that was produced without um, the addition of heat or, or chemicals uh, extracted from the olive, um, but that gets refined because it has some flavor defect. Um, so that oil will be, be heated. Sometimes there'll be some alkalis involved, but never solvents. And that's a key distinction here with olive oil because olive oils are never extracted using solvents, <clears throat> nor are they refined using solvents. So it, it, it's um, what you get from the refining. It's a pure, uh, it's, it's, there it is. There it is. <laughs> No, it's, um, it's going to be a neutral flavor, neutral color, um, and, and basically it's going to look a lot like, um, you know, any oil that you might see in the supermarket and not have, have any flavor. So what, what the industry does is add back some virgin oil um, for flavor, for color, and with that it adds some polyphenols. I think we'll get to the discussion of polyphenols in another, another segment. 
Um, and then just to add what light olive oil is. So yeah. you may know, you see that in the market, that's light olive oil. It's, it's, it's olive oil with little less virgin enrichment. It's, it's a lighter flavor than regular olive oil. Right, right. Um, yeah, and there's a question, does, does pure, the word, use of the word pure mislead consumers? We want to avoid use of that, that word. And I think, <laughs> Right. Say about that. Right. Right. All right. Um, Yeah. I was just going to say there's this other question that comes in, and I wonder if we just head it off right now because I know it's going to come up. (laughs) I I want to address that at the end. Okay, you got it. So this uh, this is a question about extra virginity and that and that book because um, you got it absolutely. That's a very you know I expect expect that question. So you got uh, it. Okay. Uh, and, and there was one other question that came in in advance that maybe I should address now. Let's see. No, no, no. I, I think both of these, I, we should wait till we do the, I think polyphenol question comes up in the next segment. So let's, let's go to that. Okay. Okay. I think uh, we're ready to tee up the next, uh, next segment. Spain produces all these kinds of oil, but we're taking a deep dive into extra virgin. In Jaén, the harvest typically runs from October to January, but we're here for the early harvest, the most urgent part of the season, because these are the olives that are made into premium extra virgin. You see, making great olive oil is a race against time. The fruit begins to degrade the second it's picked, so producers try to move it from the field to the mill in under three hours. Heat is the enemy of flavor, so you want to cool your olives down as quickly as possible. To understand what's at stake for these farmers, first you need to know some olive basics. This green olive and this dark olive, these are not different varieties. This is the same olive at a different stage of ripeness. So all olives start out green, and as they ripen, they get darker. Olive oil is made from olives at every stage of ripeness. In fact, the more ripe an olive is, the more oil it contains but the more mellow the flavor. If the olive is green, it contains less oil, but a stronger, more intense flavor. Now the perfect moment for extra virgin is when the tree contains olives that are both sort of greeny yellow and olives that are just starting to darken. but it gets even more nuanced than that. Two olives that may look exactly the same color on the outside aren't always at the same level of ripeness on the inside. Olives are not a fruit you can just pluck from a tree and taste. They're full of bitter compounds that make them totally unpalatable. That's why table olives undergo several stages of brining to eke out that bitterness. So how do producers like Lola and Francisco know when their olives are ready to be harvested? Observamos el momento óptimo de maduración, viendo el fruto, el color que tiene. Se hace también un análisis en el laboratorio para determinar el momento graso que tiene esta aceituna. Al final es ese momento mágico. Cada agricultor quiere tener ese ADN en su aceite, que sea único. That quest for singularity makes this moment especially fraught. No duermo, estar toda la noche inquieta, visitando el campo, mirando el tiempo, lloverá, no lloverá, nervios, solo nervios. This harvest, the olives ripened earlier than usual, so several producers, including Lola and Francisco, had to jump into action. (music) 
the harvesters split into groups, with each group working on a single tree at a time. They spread out nets to catch the olives as they remove them from the tree, either by the traditional barra, motorized rakes, handheld shakers, or by a shaker vehicle. tried my hand at La Barra. Vamos a ir peinándolo. Muy bien. Un poquito más de fuerza, Nico. Así, peinándole. Arriba, abajo, peinándole. Este es fantástico. Upper body strength. Only 66 million trees to go. One down. Oh, but the bara was nothing. I also tried the handheld shaker. Okay. Wait, no, 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 solo yo, solo yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to try this for myself. All right, let's see. All right, un mano. Una mano. Yeah. Okay. Shoulder. Ah, shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. Okay. Ha-ha. I feel powerful now. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try to get this hook on the branch. When you see the magnitude of the labor that goes into the harvest, you see why extra virgin costs more. The olives at this early stage of maturity absolutely cling to the tree. And after all this effort, the return is shockingly small. Si un árbol nos da de 20 a 50 kilos de aceituna, de 10 kilos de aceituna, tendríamos un litro, una botella solo. If the olives are more mature, you get more oil. Si están más maduras, se obtiene el doble, justo el doble. <laughs> okay. <laughs> very, very, very. I have to. So, can I just, yes, Joe? Have please, you, you? You have to. Joe, <laughs> <laughs> so you have you? You must have tried harvesting, okay. right? No. Oh come on! Just, just the rake, just the rake, not the, not that. What do you call? What do you call it? <laughs> well, the 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 bar, right? The bara and the and the motorized, yeah, shaker, handheld shaker. I mean, the seriously, the upper body strength of these guys. That's why I think you just see men harvesting mostly in the fields. It is such an upper body workout, intense. And it was hot at that time. I didn't know if it was gonna be cold or hot. It was, re it was boiling. It is intense work. Yeah. And I, I noticed a question um, that came in that, that asked like sort of, you know, what is the thing that I, I learned from this shoot? Cause I was, there's, there's many things that I learned about <laughs> olive oil, but I have such an appreciation for the work that goes into this food product. Every step of the way from the harvest to all year round, you know, the care and the attention that goes into it. But also I, I appreciate it more. I understand the price point better. You know, you, you can really understand first what, what um, Lola says about like the amount of olive oil. Did she say that yet? I can't even remember. Yeah. She, um, you know, just how little olive oil comes off these trees at that state of ripeness and you, and then all of the work, all of the people, everything, all the labor going into it, you get why, you know, a really nice bottle of extra virgin olive oil is $15, which to me now doesn't sound so much anymore because I get it. I really do get it. That That's probably my top line, like takeaway from that. <laughs> so, so there are a couple of interesting um, aspects to this. One is the labor, right? So the, yeah. the, the amount of labor that can go into the harvest. So one of the things that I know you wanted to, but just couldn't work into your 
um, your production was um, the, the, a description of the sort of more modern um, methods of harvesting, right? And it's a whole new yes. method of, of planting um, and harvesting. Um, that is, you know, it's becoming more and more popular because it reduces the labor um, that's required in the field. So we have a, a short clip to show um, our viewers who are not familiar with what's called super high density um, planting. So, so you can see here, this is a shot from above. <clears throat> um, the, 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 um, the trees are, are cultivated almost like vineyards, right? They're in, in narrow rows. And then they are harvested using these large mechanical harvesters. They, they ride over the trees and remove the, um, remove the olives that way. Okay, so I wanted to share that. That's, um, you know, that's a new technology. Um, it, it's, you know, it's, it's still, um, you know, being developed and being um, uh, sort of uh, spread out to new varieties. Initially, it was only uh, possible to uh, cultivate certain varieties in that way. You is know. that because they they were varieties that could be grown together, like close to be grown, be grown close together? Um, and basically, they have to be you know be pruned like a hedge, like a hedgerow, yeah. and, and right, so that the, uh, and and kept kept uh, short enough for the for the machines to go over. Yeah. So the other thing though that that's come up, you know, and you you know, I think it's it's uh, important. A lot of people don't understand that you know the difference between green olives and black olives really yes. is time and maturity. Um, and, and that, what, what Lola said there about the, the volume, so that also applies to the polyphenols that are in the olive, right? So right. The, the polyphenols are almost, think of it almost as like it's a fixed amount of polyphenol in the, in the fruit. As the fruit continues to grow and get bigger and have more water content and more yeah. oil content, the polyphenol content is less concentrated. Yes. So when you're, when you're harvesting early and the green olives, um, are going to have a much higher concentration of polyphenols. Right. So that that gets us back to that the talk, and there's a, a bunch of questions about about the polyphenol counts. Yeah. Um, and and there was a, a couple of questions that came in in advance, and I think it's worth let me pull those up because it's worth addressing those now. But, you know. Um, so in terms of health, I don't want to get into a big long discussion of health because that's not my background, but olive oil. You know, all olive oil is is healthy, potentially healthy from from its, um, you know, the fact that it's a monounsaturated fat loaded, you know, primarily with uh, oleic acid. Um, but the content of polyphenols um, is a whole other aspect that um, uh, sets olive oil apart from other oils that have similar fatty acid profiles. So. So the question is, how much olive oil should I consume each day? I mean, the FDA has a qualified health claim um, for olive oils that recommends um, two tablespoons a day. Um, uh, as an you far exceed that. <laughs> yeah. Well, some, some some researchers now, you know that. So that FDA um, recommendation that's based just on the fatty acid profile, right? So that applies to all grades of olive oil. But when you start looking at the polyphenol content and and potential benefits. There are researchers that tell you to really aim for four tablespoons a day, um, because there there is some some real special properties in these polyphenols that are still being studied and researched. But um, you know, in, in fact, in Europe, you can make a claim, um, a health claim, based on the content of the polyphenols. We we don't have approval for FDA to do that yet here. Um, and then a, quest, a similar question was, which varieties are the, uh, are, are the varietals are the healthiest? And there's really no good answer to that. Um, in part, you know, some will have more, more polyphenols than others, um, but um, th there's also no clear understanding of, of how much polyphenol content is enough, right? So yeah. it could be like vitamins in that, you know, at a certain point, you, your body maxes out on the benefit right. from the vitamin that you take and it doesn't really need anymore. And, and so we just don't know. Yeah. But, but for now, you know, I, I, like, I like to, you know, because polyphenols contribute to the flavor, um, I, I, I like to, as a rule of thumb, you know, ask consumers to think about, you know, the more, the more flavor your oil has, the more potential uh, benefits that it has um, right. coming from the polyphenols. Right. And then there was a question about refining and what does that do to the polyphenols? It actually yeah. removes them. OK, 
Okay, so that's that's clear. Refined olive oil um, has has no polyphenols. It has other health benefits. It has the, the fatty acid profile. It has squalene, um, but it does not have polyphenols. And that's one of the reasons that what's sold as olive oil has some polyphenol, has some virgin oil added back. And and so so even what's called olive oil has some polyphenols, which is more than you know, seed oils in the supermarket that have none or have no, yeah. no olive polyphenols whatsoever. Yeah. There is a, a question there that I just want to mention. I think it's coming from Adele. I think we can cover that. Um, there's a segment where I talk a little bit about the flavor profile of extra virgin. So I think we can talk about a little bit more about like sweet bitterness, that sort of thing when we get to that section of the video. Okay. Yeah. Um, did we miss anything? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Um, oh, and, and color. Okay, so that was this was a, this was another question that came in in advance about the color. Yeah. Um, how does color of the oil impact the flavor, and is green olive oil better? And so the answer to that is no. Okay, so <laughs> it's a very easy answer. And you know, one of the things about olive oil, it's a very highly regulated product um, in terms of uh, its uh, you know authenticity um, uh, standards, but also quality. Um, it is really the only food product that has a, a, an organoleptic panel uh, test that's required to determine it, what its grade is. So let me show you, I'm going to share a screen here to show you um, how it is that these organized taste panels do tasting. Um, yeah, can you see, can you see that? Yeah. Blue, okay, so that blue glass is what professional tasters use. And the reason they do that is to mask the color. Yeah. Because we all have sort of a subjective bias that a dark green oil is going to taste more flavorful or more fruity than an oil that's maybe more golden in color, but it's just not, it's just not valid. So to avoid that bias, um, professional tasters use blue glasses or red glasses, um, something that will obscure the actual color of the oil. So as uh, you know, if you're putting the oil on your counter and Nicole will address that later and you want it to look pretty, you know, sure, go for the green oil, but it's really does not, it should not um, make a difference in terms of the flavor. We indeed, and we in fact made um, a, like a third uh, little mini video, actually. If you guys go to True Food TV, you'll see it says is, I think, green or gold olive oil better. Um, and you'll see a uh, sort of a tray of different color olive oils all made at like really high end, like early season extra virgins that 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 year that we were there like they had been made like weeks in advance of our arrival and it's like a rainbow you know it, they're all beautiful they all had their own unique flavors and there wasn't one that was you know kind of better than the other it was just extraordinary though to see those differences and I think it's it's worth sort of celebrating all those different colors and all of those different tastes it's what makes olive oil interesting to me at least no no question and, and yeah. we're you know in our association we're actually you know, moving towards really trying to celebrate these special oils mm. that are produced early harvest or in special ways or, yeah. or with special connections to the earth or so anyway, it's, it's, um, you know, it's just a remarkable um, agricultural product. Yeah. And, you know, so happy to be working in this industry. Yeah. Um, I think we could maybe move on to the third, the next segment. Okay. The olives are carted from the field to a central collection point. Here, the stems, leaves, and debris are sifted away from the fruit. The olives are washed with water, and now they are ready to enter the mill to be crushed. Now, notice I said crushed, not pressed. Pressing is the antiquated way of making extra virgin. So, Many years ago, olives were ground between stones like this, and the paste was then pressed between burlap mats to extract the oil. Now today, 
a mm. tiny number of producers do it that way, and it's none of the extra virgin that you're buying in your stores. These days, extra virgin is made with surprisingly modern technology in super hygienic facilities, and we're about to go inside one right now. Okay, cut. What? Well, on my extra virgin olive oil, it says cold pressed. So what does that mean if it's not pressed? That's actually a really good question. Cold pressed is just a marketing term. Technically, all extra virgin is cold pressed or cold crushed. Heat is the enemy of flavor. So those flavor compounds in the olives start to break down under excessive heat. But you know, cold pressed sort of conjures up that romantic image of every Mediterranean village having their own olive press. But wait, can I go now? There's an audience waiting to see how extra virgin is made. Oh, right, right, okay. Action. Come on, guys. The first step is milling. Inside this rotating stainless steel drum are hammers that crush and grind the fruit. The olive paste moves into a malaxer. I love that name. The malaxer churns the paste so that micro droplets of oil coalesce. Producers closely monitor this stage, using a thermometer to make sure the paste does not exceed 80.6 degrees Fahrenheit. The paste is then pumped into a spinning centrifuge that separates the oil from the pumice. That's the skin, flesh, water, and pits. What pours out of that centrifuge is, well, liquid gold. I have been waiting the whole time, the whole visit for this moment. Let's taste it. Okay, I finally get what they're saying when they say fresh fruit juice. My mouth is filling with so much spice, so much flavor right now. So much flavor right now. And the smell, I wish you guys could smell this. It's amazing. I'm going back in. The fresh extra virgin goes immediately into storage tanks to limit its exposure to oxygen. And from the tanks, the oil is siphoned into bottles. Lola and Francisco's mills are considered small, at least compared to this place, the world's largest olive oil mill. It's run by a co-op that mills bottles and sells oil produced by thousands of farmers. This co-op model is how most of the olive oil is produced in Spain. So chugging, chugging the uh, the extra virgin there, huh? <laughs> I I have to say, you, I my audience is really shocked about that. <laughs> so many comments, like, was that really tasty? Was that really good? And I swear to God, <laughs> it was delicious. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I know what that says about me, but I love. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, it, it's true. There, there's um, there's an aversion that people have to, you know drinking oil and you know if it's if it's an odorless colorless you know clear like oil i mean yeah i wouldn't want to drink that right either, right i mean so but you know olive oil it is fat um you, you know and but we do drink we do drink milk and we do yeah. drink smoothies that are you know full of yogurt and fat and so you think of it that way it's it's not so bad i actually i know this is crazy but when i buy an extra bottle of extra virgin olive oil first thing i do you know like it's just like a loaf of bread where you break off the end as soon as you get home and eat the end or get it or actually get in the car but um <laughs> what i do when i get home is i open the bottle and i take a swig i yeah. i, I want to know immediately what that tastes like um i i totally understand that yeah yeah um, absolutely and I, it's really something we encourage everybody to, you, know, you don't have to just swig it out of the bottle. <laughs> I know that's a different <laughs> thing. But you really need to learn to um, appreciate the flavors that you like um, and, and to know to help you make good decisions in the, in the store. And we'll, we'll cover, there was a question about that. Um, that, that yeah, uh, I'll, I'll just say one more thing about the experience of, you know, going to the mill, tasting it. And the, 
the fragrance that you get inside an oil mill is, I mean, it's just unbelievably intense. You know, it's hard to describe. It's there's so many different sort of flavors going on, but there was such a connective for me when I um, I came home after that shoot with like you know as many bottles as I could possibly with my suitcase, right, from all the early season stuff I could get, and remember um, opening that first bottle. And the smell that came out of the friends was exactly like it smelled in the mill. And it just, it was like a revelation. And it just, I, I just hadn't experienced that in an extra virgin. And it really made me want to seek out different kinds and different and, 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 and start experimenting, not just getting the same one over and really start exploring that because it was, it was quite addictive. It was like, it's like a hit now. I, I'm, I'm like on the hunt thing is like sort of fragrant and beautiful as that, as that moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In fact, one of our, one of our, uh, you know, little, little comment that came in just worth pointing out that the overall consumption of, of uh, fats um, oils in the, in the world, olive oil only represents less than 2% of what's consumed wow. in terms of uh, Wow. So we have our work cut out for us. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there is, there, there is, um, I, I see um, one of our colleagues from, from Egypt has, has submitted a question. And Egypt has planted, I think they had a, a, a project to plant like 2 million new trees by the end of next year. And wow. uh, Portugal has undergone a huge expansion and, you know, certainly up there among the, the world's top producers. And um, there's, you know, great olive oil being grown in, in South America, in the United States. We have oil that's that's um, being being produced in, of course, California, but in addition, Texas and Arizona and Georgia. And I'm sure I'm forgetting others, but um, it it is it is a it is a great um, product, a great um, um, culture of of, of yeah. olive oil that that is it is spreading around the world, and we need to. We need to do all that we can to make sure <laughs> as much olive oil is available, good quality, authentic olive oils of all varieties and all price points, but yeah, you know, yeah. real deal um, as much as possible. So, um, all right. So this segment, you you address the you know the the the, the cold press question, which you know is, yeah. is is always top of mind, and you know it's, it's true the the um, that that phrase first cold press is really quite a quite an anachronistic phrase because you're right nowadays very little of the oil is actually pressed in the traditional sense of a screw press um, but um, the other parts of that phrase are also a little not quite current not quite cold is it <laughs> it's not quite cold as you, as you said it's 80 degrees right they control the temperature but it wouldn't say 80 degrees is cold unless you are well, I don't know, maybe in, in some parts of the world you would, but that's not cold to most people. So it really means right. the temperature is controlled. Um, and first, so there is no extra virgin olive oil that is not from the first press. So that's, so it's, right. it's really not worth, you know, mentioning that, but it's, it's something that has stuck. Um, it's not misleading in any way, right? It's, yeah. all, it's all real, but not it's just romantic, I think. Yeah, it's not, it's not <laughs> literally correct, but it's subjectively and you know, fact. It's it's mostly it's correct in, in uh, you know in, in substance, but not in the words. So, right. Um, questions came in about filtering. So, um, is is filtered olive oil healthier? And what's the difference between filtered and unfiltered extra virgin olive oil? And I, I think the easiest way to explain this really is to think about, you know, orange juice that is with pulp or without pulp. Um, you know, the the um, when when the oil is first produced, it looked like um, Nicole, the oil you were you were sipping, was it unfiltered? It must have been, right? Because it was just off of the the mill. Yeah. Uh, you just out yeah. of the centrifuge, basically, right? So yeah. Um, it, it's going to have the. Um, you know the, the solid and fruit materials are going to add some um, some additional uh, flavor. There's no doubt, uh, but what they also can do is increase the likelihood that that will that will go rancid, right? So the, the fruit won't last as long as as the oil. Um, yeah. So so it's a it's a bit of a trade off. Um, 
you know, um, but people, there are, there are people that love unfiltered and there are people that love, love filtered. So um, they're, they're both, uh, you know, worth exploring and see what you like. Yeah. Um, let's see, any other questions that have come in uh, relevant to this segment? I will say the um, co-op that I went to was astounding. I mean, you guys get a, a, a little taste of it, but, and, and we kind of show the scale of it walking through there. You're just absolutely dwarfed by these strengths. And, you know, all of the, you know, all of the mills, all the centrifuges on, I mean, it's just a colossal uh, undertaking, but then you think, they're all literacies, you know, there's these little farmers that are all bringing their stuff to be, you know, made in a really rolled, clean, you know, way. It's, it, was, it was a fascinating, that was another eye-opening process. There's like the small mills like Lola and Paco, but then most of it is going to that. Right. Let's, let's, um, there's a, I had a thought about the storage tanks and I'm going to yeah. hold off on, on that. Maybe you can remind me later when we talk about the enemies of uh, olive oil when you talk yeah. about the enemies of olive oil. Um, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Refer to that. Okay. All right. Um, I think, I think, yeah, maybe we should have relevant to, to, um, to this at this point. So let's move on to the next segment of the video. So now you know about the end product, but what about how it all begins? Olive, how does it grow? You can grow a tree from a fresh olive pit, but farmers typically plant young trees that began life as cuttings in a nursery. The cutting, taken from a mature tree, grows its own roots and establishes itself as its own tree. It can take 10 years before a tree will produce a good-sized crop. Those olives begin as flowers in the spring, which require pollination. Wind typically does the job, but the butterflies are happy to help too. Baby olives grow from the pollinated ovaries, swelling up as the summer goes on. Meanwhile, farmers monitor their orchards for pests that might lay their eggs in the growing olives, chomp on the tree leaves, or spread disease. Of course, if cared for well, we know these trees can live for hundreds of years, which makes these producers more than farmers. They're stewards. You know, I, I notice so much green around here. This does very much right here feel like a forest. It is a forest. It is, it <laughs> right. is, right? We have to take care of this yes. forest. We are not only agriculture, but at the same time, we are taking care of thousands and thousands of hectares. Yes. And it's full of life. Yes. It's full of life. Yes. <laughs> So I've been researching this episode for the past 10 months and I have to come clean. I'm astounded by how little I knew about an ingredient I use in my kitchen almost every day. But I'm also excited about how limitless the world of extra virgin olive oil feels to me now that I've just cracked open the door to it. Whether it's extra virgin from Spain or Australia or Croatia, each bottle is different from the other, influenced by the terroir and the unique vision of the producer. It's a lot like wine, only of course wine gets better with age and extra virgin is exactly the opposite, which is why you need to know how to store it and how to choose the right bottle in the first place. I've got you covered. Look out for my companion video. You'll be able to click it right here when it goes live. Until then, from the world capital of olive oil, hasta la vista. Okay, super. Um, we're gonna we're gonna now move on to the the, um, the second video, which was the companion video on tips and myths. Um, before we do, I, I want to just mention one thing. So that I thought that was a particularly um, you know sort of telling way to end uh, your your video, Nicole, as you walked through the 
which called a florist, smelled like a florist of, of olive trees. And so that really evokes the uh, whole issue of sustainability um, of, of olive oil, of olive grown, of olive cultivation and production of olive oil. Um, and I just wanted to mention that, you know, this is, of course, it's climate change is a uh, concern of every industry, you know, in the world, but um, all, all, and olive oil is no exception, but olive oil and olive trees are, are, are well positioned um, in, in terms of sustainability. Um, it, certain things can, can certainly improve and, and producers can do more to improve it. But, um, you know, a study was done, I want to share just a couple of slides um, from the International Olive Council, um, where, um, oops, yeah, so this uh, this uh, the slides in, in Spanish, but you can pretty much make out what the um, the conclusions are down here. So one hectare, which is about two and a half acres um, of olive orchard of olive orchards, can neutralize um, one person's annual carbon contribution. Um, and a, a liter of um, of olive oil um, captures essentially when you take into account the tree where, where it was grown can capture uh, 10.65 kilograms of uh, CO2. Um, the, the conclusion actually on this slide here is in English. So an olive tree uh, footprint stores the annual carbon footprint of a person. The world's production of olive oil absorbs the emissions of 16,000 people. Um, the world olive oil stores an amount of CO2 equivalent to that of 7 million inhabitants. That's the population of Hong Kong. Um, and the olive grove is a sustainable strategy against climate change. And you had mentioned earlier about the leaf, um, how, how it's even the, down to the leaf, the olive tree is designed to be, uh, uh, to be sustainable. So um, it's, um, you know, and, and you can, the biodiversity that's, you can do, it's not, it's a permanent crop. It's not like this yeah. trees are replanted every year. They're there, right. they're, trees, they're there for how many thousands of years. So um, anyway, it's, it's, um, um, all the more reason to uh, promote more and more and more olive oil. Um, so let's go, let's jump ahead to the, um, the video on, um, um, on the tips and myths. Yes. What you doing? Just putting the extra virgin back near the stove. In the window. What's wrong with that? That is no way to treat olive oil. That's what. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, it's time for a top five. A what? A top five. Really, right now? Right now. Top five extra virgin olive oil tips and myths. Ready, set, pour. Hello lovely people, I'm Nicole Jolly, this is True Food TV, and we need to talk about our enemies. Olive oil has four big enemies, heat, oxygen, light, and age. You can remember them by the acronym OLA, that's the Spanish word for hello, of course. If you consistently expose even the best extra virgin to any of those four things, the oil will degrade. You can tell your oil has gone rancid if it smells waxy, like crayons. The ideal container is opaque, like these, because it doesn't let in any light. Even a dark tinted bottle is good. The material of the container doesn't really matter, so long as it blocks out light and seals properly to keep oxygen at bay. Now, if you do like I do and use a clear decanter for cooking, make sure you store it in a dark pantry away from light and away from... Well, that's our next tip. Are you guilty of storing your olive oil? Here. I used to do this. Oh, and also in the hot cupboard right next to the stove. Storing olive oil next to the stove is like setting fire to the money you use to buy it. I know this may be the most convenient place, but you're just making it go rancid. Keep it in as cool and dark a place as possible, which means in my kitchen with all these windows, I have to keep it off the counter entirely and out of the sunlight. Just how critical is temperature? 
When producers are making extra virgin oil, they are obsessed with keeping the olive paste cool. They use thermometers to continuously check the temperature because the very definition of virgin is olive oil produced without using chemicals or heat to alter the oil. If you want the full story of what goes into producing olive oil, then you're gonna have to check out my episode, Extra Virgin, How Is It Made? I'll link it at the end. We filmed this season's olive harvest, and it is absolutely epic. Okay, so if you buy extra virgin in a dark bottle and store it properly, how long is it good for? Olive oil, stored correctly, should be good for two years from harvest. But once you open that bottle, you should use it all up in two to three months. Every bottle should have a best by date or a harvest date. Go look at your olive oil right now. If you're already past the best by date, get that stuff out of your kitchen and buy a fresh bottle. It will transform your life. Which brings me to the A in Ola. Olive oil does not get better with age like wine does. You should think of olive oil like you do a fresh fruit juice, because that's exactly what olive oil is, the fresh juice of the olive fruit. If you are gifted an expensive bottle of extra virgin, please do not save it for a special occasion. Use it immediately on everything. In fact, I'll show you some of my favorite ways to eat and cook with olive oil in just a second. But first... So now that you know how sensitive olive oil is to heat, oxygen, light, and age, you should choose a size bottle that is in proportion with the amount and frequency that you regularly consume olive oil. Because as soon as you open that bottle, the clock starts ticking. Instead of buying a big, massive bottle that takes six months to get through, try choosing a size that takes you just two to three months to consume. And then when that's done, buy a fresh one. This way of using olive oil actually opens up a whole world of opportunity to try new flavors and varieties. The next time you go to your grocery store, stop and check out the extra virgin choices you have. Maybe buy a different one you've never tried and see how it compares in flavor to what you're used to, because there really are differences. I go into all of that in my extra virgin, how is it made video. Okay, great. So, you know, it's, it was clear that, you know, I mean, olive oil, <clears throat> those of you who are in the industry know, and those who are learning, it, it is a very complicated subject. And I have to say that I, I felt really confident having a, you know, um, a, an intelligent journalist like Nicole uh, handle these questions because not everyone can handle this. And, um, you know, they, they made these, these videos, she did her own research, um, you know, it, it was sort of, we were sitting on pins and needles and what is she going to say? I hope she gets it right. And she got, she got it all right. So, um, thank you, Nicole. Um, so, thank you for trusting us. I mean, <laughs> um, it, was, it, was, uh, it, it was, it was definitely a good choice. I'm glad we did. Um, so let's see. Um, what do we cover here? So one, all right. So one of the things you, you talked about was the um, the air, right? Some of the uh, yes. And, and remember that scene where in in the um, um, the co-op with those large tank farms, those big large tanks. So what what's very important in storing those tanks, right? Is they have to be temperature. I mean, they're not you know they're not chilled. They're not refrigerated, but they're they're protected from excess heat and from air. So there's like a, an inert gas that gets pumped into the tank to uh, avoid any contact with oxygen. Right? So nitrogen typically is the, is the blanket that's, that's put into those tanks to preserve them until it's time to bottle. Okay. Um, what else did I want to say about this um, segment? Um, somebody made a, a good comment. Um, buy it, check for some sort of certification. There's lots of um, your station, right? Does a seal? Yes, we do. And so, in fact, I want. So again, that, that's all part. I want to talk about um, talk about this whole question about fraud and fake olive oil. So I, I would like to kind of wrap up with that because there's sure the questions you got from here, and that's part of that conversation. Um, let's see uh, how how generally how to select a good olive oil. I think you covered that really well. So I'm not sure you need to. That was another question that came in early. 
but you know, you basically need to choose, you know, learn to taste, as we said before, learn what your taste preferences are and, and your budget. And, um, you know, ultimately you, you have to decide what's, you know, what, what fits uh, your own um, personal preferences. Um, in terms of health benefits, as I said earlier, general rule, more flavor, more health benefits. But, you know, again, you've got to balance all those things. Um, and there was that um, comment from Egypt before about sort of sweet and bitter and analyzed. Actually, the stuff that I thought was in the main video is actually in that third video. <laughs> but it's um, you know, it goes back to what you were explaining before about the concentration of polyphenols, right? When they're really yeah. concentrated, you're going to taste, you know, more spice, more bitterness. Uh, and when when the olives are more ripe, there's more uh, dilution. So you might get what people would call a sweeter olive oil, that, that kind of thing. So again, you said you just have to keep tasting, right? Finding the flavor, the kind of olive oil that you personally like. All right, we're, we're, um, we're already a little bit over our time. So let's, okay, okay. <laughs> go, let's go ahead, finish this off and then we'll, we'll, wrap finish it up. Up all the, we'll finish up all the open questions. Okay. There's a lot of confusion out there about whether it's safe to cook with extra virgin olive oil. I'm going to make it simple. Yes. And that includes frying, which I'll come back to. I basically keep two kinds of extra virgin in my kitchen at all times, a less expensive bottle for cooking and a bottle in the 15 to $25 range when I want the extra virgin to really infuse the food. And I'm talking about more than just salads. I pour it over cooked vegetables, just before they hit the table, over soups, over pasta. It's one of the easiest and most overlooked ways to add a ton of flavor to an otherwise ordinary meal. Think of extra virgin as a condiment, a condiment that has the added benefit of being really high in antioxidant compounds that support your cardiovascular and immune systems. And the stronger the flavor of the extra virgin, the higher the concentration of those healthful compounds. One of my favorite ways to cook with extra virgin is to roast vegetables. This is hands down the most delicious way to eat them. From potatoes to carrots, even broccoli and cauliflower, you can do this to anything. Chop your vegetables evenly, massage them with oil, and roast them at 400 degrees Fahrenheit until tender. They come out caramelized and delicious. Now, if you're cooking greens, this is your tried and true way to cook them. Cover the bottom of a pan with extra virgin. Heat it up on a medium flame with a clove of minced garlic. When the garlic has sizzled gently for about 30 seconds, you don't want it to darken. Add your washed greens. Don't worry about the water still clinging to them. You want that. Add some salt. Cover the pan, lower the flame to medium low, and let them half steam, half braise in the oil your greens will be positively addictive. Eat them as a side dish, stir them into soup, or toss them with pasta, a little Parmigiano Reggiano, and you've got dinner. Okay, finally, let's get to frying. Extra virgin is incredibly stable at high temperatures because it's high in antioxidants and monounsaturated fats. I grew up eating my mom's delicious chicken cutlets fried in olive oil, meatballs, breaded fish. If she was frying, she was frying in olive oil. Now, my go-to weeknight meal are these killer zucchini feta pancakes, which get deliciously crispy edges as they fry. I'll be posting the full recipe for these in my next video, so look out for that. Mean okay. And I can attest that those are delicious zucchini. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say I am cooking broccoli rob tonight, that very same like olive oil the whole bit. <laughs> well, no, I, I'm obsessed. I, I, was, I was in Chinatown I, last week. I bought some water spinach and made it the same way. So it's nice. It's, <laughs> it's the same, it's the same. You know, I, I, I will just quickly mention, Joe, um, when I was research for frying, I really, you know, there's so much conflicting information on the internet and I never trust anything 
I find on the internet. So um, I, I read a lot of scientific studies, like crazy amounts of studies to make sure I was getting that right. And it was very clear from the scientific evidence that I read um, that it is very stable for frying. I think you would agree. <laughs> No, and again, I, I, you know, I, we 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 trusted you, and you found all the right answers. It's and it, it's not that it's you know, it, it's just what it is. It's the, what the research shows. And it, yeah. you know, and it's, anecdotally, of course, people have been cooking and frying with olive oil for millennia. Yeah. Um, so it shouldn't come as as a big surprise. Um, no. There was a question that came in. I'll, I'll address it very quickly. Um, whether you know whether you can reuse olive oil? And um, the, the answer is yes, very simply, the answer is yes. And in fact, I, I um, you know, um, Olive Oils of Spain has a, you know, a clear indication on their website that you, know, you can absolutely reuse it for further cooking and frying. You shouldn't use it, you shouldn't use the cooked oil as a raw oil uh, for marinades or dressings and shouldn't mix new and used oil when you cook again. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's definitely something you can do to, for, uh, to be more economical. Um, in fact, one of those studies on frying with olive oil tested extra virgin olive oil heated at six hours, you know, in a fryer. Yeah. So, so yeah, that it's, um, that's, that's very, very clear. So, but the point, so you raised the point about not believing everything you read on the internet, which China now leads me to the question I, I've been waiting to address at the end is, is, is the idea of fake olive oil, right? So look, um, there's, there's no, you know, avoiding the fact that there's been um, fraud in, in olive oil since the Roman times, at least, probably, yeah. probably before that. Um, and, and you'll find that wherever you have a valuable commodity. Um, however, um, that said, there's a, there's a lot of confusion in what we read on the internet between what's fake um, and, and what's adulterated, right? So the question, the other questions that came in today um, specifically talked about adulteration. The question that came in over the, um, over the internet in advance was, I've heard that most olive oil is fake. Can I be sure that I'm buying authentic olive oil? How can I test for authentic olive oil at home? So while there have been, over the last 10 years, there've been a lot of uh, published reports about olive oil being fake, um, and these are, are reports that have been published. Generally, they're, they're um, produced by um, people who have decided to test olive oils from supermarkets, but they do it in a way where they're not actually testing the phys physics and chemistry of the oil to determine if it's adulterated. Rather, they are tasting the oil to determine if, in their opinion, the oil um, reaches the extra virgin grade. Because as you mentioned at the beginning, Nicole, um, extra virgin, extra is really the, a grade of virgin oil. Um, it has to be without defect. That's, uh, yeah. you know, there are a number of qualifications, but it can have no flavor defect. Um, and so what, what these reports have been, have been finding, if you read them carefully, they're saying that the, the oils don't meet the taste testers um, standard for what should, extra virgin olive oil should taste like. But in each case, these, these oils are, are um, in, in, um, not having been found to have been adulterated. Adulteration is something that you can test fairly easily and, and within a, a, a you know, fairly good margin for error, determine if it's been adulterated. None of these oils have been adulterated. So when you read fake, you really need to be sure you're, you understand what the person who's reporting is talking about. Um, are they talking about a subjective taste test that they think it's not quite extra virgin and that it's just virgin uh, or is it adulterated? So the reality is, you know, these internet stories, we're not the, you know, consumers aren't the only ones who read them. The FDA reads them too. And, and so several years ago, the FDA took it upon themselves to do a study. And in Washington, DC, and I could share this, I can't, I don't know, I, can, I don't know if I share it during the webinar, but I could send it, send it out, send it to anyone who's interested. They did a study where they uh, randomly purchased 88 bottles of extra virgin olive oil from DC area, um, in Maryland, DC supermarkets and internet. They tested everyone for authenticity. They did not confirm adulteration in any one, not one of them, okay? So not one of them. And as a result of that, that study that they did, they concluded that the, the risk of adulteration in extra virgin olive oil is low, okay? So 
Now, I know you, this is contrary to what you're reading on the internet, but I'm telling you, you need to read more carefully what's on the internet. Um, truth is, the last 10 years, a lot has been done to, to bolster the protection of um, the olive oil supply, both on the export side, both in terms of the, the um, exporting countries, or, you know, this, this is the idea that their, their prize product, you know, Italian olive oil, Spanish olive oil, Greek oil, that it might be adulterated. They, they're, they're watching the borders, they're testing oils that before they're exported. And then on, on, on the U.S. side, the industry, is our association in particular, has taken a very active role in monitoring um, quality. We've, we've done, up until the recent years, we've done up to 200 random samples uh, a year taking uh, oils off the shelf. And look, we, we find, you know, there's, there are occasional uh, problems, but we would estimate that based on market share, that we're talking about 2% of, of the market where, where we've had some questions. So the, 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 the advice we can give, I give, is look, if you're shopping in a retail, with a retailer that you trust, um, particularly if it's a brand that you know, um, you, 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 you can rest assured you're buying uh, an authentic olive oil. If in terms, if you want to go a little further, you want to try something that you, you've never, never tried before, a brand that you don't know, I don't want to discourage you from trying them. That's where the tasting comes in, right? Go home and taste it. Yeah. Um, and, if you're, and if the price of this oil that you don't know is too good to be true, well, it might be too good to be true. Um, so, uh, and then the last thing is you could look for quality seals. So our association, the North American Olive Oil Association has an about olive oil seal. Um, and it's widely out there on supermarkets and, and our members of members are, our association who are part of that program um, submit to random testing that we do. They pay a fee, they pay for the testing. We do it, we do it independently, we send them to um, International Olive Council standard um, uh, certified um, uh, laboratories and test panels for, for confirmation. So that's that's what I have to say about about the fake olive oil, <laughs> fake news about fake olive oil. Okay, so um, we, we want yeah. people to be able to trust what they're buying, but you need to take agency as well. You know, at home, yeah. learn to taste, learn what you like, and if you don't like it, bring it back. Simple. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The best grocers, they'll, they'll, they'll take it back. So that's right. Yeah. Um, one last thing, Nicole, I would, I, you know, there's been a couple of questions that came up and, you know, can, you know, what, how, how did we end up doing this? You know, I mentioned there are 67 countries in the world and yes, Spain is the, the world's largest producer, but why did we do this in Spain? Why did we do it in Spain? <laughs> well, well, I, I knew that, um, uh, I mentioned Teresa in the beginning and her olive oils organization um, was was so keen to work with us and they were so wonderful to work with us. We were keen to work in a major in a major region because um, there's a chance, a really high chance that people are eating um, the olive oil that's coming. Right. Um, Spain, um, but it all it all worked out. How uh, what, how do you remember it, Joe? <laughs> Well, What's the backstory remember, there? I kind of remember specifically that that <laughs> you got hadn't you and Mark um, spent some time in Spain and yes, yes, the there there there. was yeah, we both have um, connections to Spain. Mark lived in Spain. I studied abroad in Spain. I was in Spain. Um, so we were we were comfortable with the language. Uh, we knew some. Uh, we knew yeah. and, and however. Neither of us had spent time in Haiyan, and that was a real revelation. That region was uh, really marvelous to see. And of course, it goes beyond Haiyan. The Spanish um, olive oil industry is kind of all over the country. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it just it just worked out that all the pieces fell together that way. But it would have been our pleasure to to film it in the olive oil <laughs> regions of the world. But it was a fantastic experience. Yeah. Maybe, maybe next year we'll, we'll find yeah. a country that'll sponsor us. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. All right. So I think, I think we've, so uh, last, let's see, anything we haven't covered here. Are there worldwide regulations? There is, I mentioned the International Olive Council. They set uh, standards. They are not a, um, uh, an authoritative body, but their standards are adopted by, regular, by regulatory agencies around the world. Um, 
there, there is a Codex International Alimentarius standard that uh, applies for all of the member countries of, of, that, trade, of that treaty. Um, and then in the United States, um, there actually are two pending petitions to establish a standard, a nationwide standard in the United States. And if you go to our website about oliveoil.org, you can find out about our petition. Um, um, yeah, and I, I think that the last question there was, is extra virgin olive oil blended in any way with other types of olive oil to produce the final product? It's not, it shouldn't be, no. Um, extra virgin olive oil is extra virgin olive oil. Um, there are different grades. You, you, if you mix a different grade into extra virgin olive oil, it's not uh, extra virgin. Yeah. Um, okay, I think yeah. we're, we're about 15 minutes over. Um, we've, lost, <laughs> we've lost some of our audience, but not entirely. Um, but thank you so much, Nicole. It's been, uh, been a real pleasure. It and, really uh, has been. Thank you for inviting me. It was, it was fun to hang with you. It was great. And I, I hope we can do, do, uh, do a project again in the future. Yeah, it would be an honor. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for your time, everyone. Thanks, everybody, thank you all for joining. Feel free to email any further questions and we'll do our best to answer. Thank you. Bye.